and the um, those really foundational programs of Main Street and Go Virginia that help you build those partnerships, help you as a community, as a district, as a region, identify what your goals and priorities are going to be and make sure that you're building a work plan that is responsive to that. that that's really building the foundation for what comes next. And one of the things that could come next for your community or your region is the Industrial Revitalization Fund program. Because once you put all of these partnerships and these great resources in place, you're going to need some buildings to put those businesses in and you're going to want to invest in the built infrastructure of your community. And that's exactly what this program does. So a brief overview of the program, the IRF fund encourages economic development and investment through the renovation of vacant and derelict structures in Virginia. Each year, the program awards funding to localities throughout the state to assist market driven projects that eliminate blight and revitalize our communities. And so there are two really key um, concepts there. Number one is that elimination of blight, vacant and derelict structures in Virginia. And then number two is that market driven purpose. So those are two things that we really need to see in projects and in applications. Since 2012, IRF has awarded funding to 38 projects in 33 communities, helping to create over 460 new jobs and leveraging over $86.5 million in private investment. And I want to note before we go further, um, and, and it's noted a bit here, that the program targets projects that will be catalytic to their communities. So we're talking about 460 new jobs and over 86 million in investment that are directly a part of the IRF program. Now, once you rehab that historic hotel or that historic theater or the historic warehouse that becomes a brewery and that gives rise to other rehabs and other jobs created and other investments in the community those are those secondary catalytic benefits that we see happen all across the state with irf projects so uh, much like with Main Street, the IRF program is receiving some additional funds over the next few years as a part of the ARPA Act. Um, the traditional IRF program gets uh, $1.5 million a year and caps awards at $600,000. And with these ARPA funds, we have an additional $22.5 million for fiscal year 2023. And um, we are anticipating a total of an additional $45 million. We just opened a round of IRF planning grants that uh, we can direct you to in the chat box. And the implementation grants will be opening later this year. So with traditional IRF, um, like ARPA IRF, the locality needs to be the applicant for these grant projects, although the properties can be publicly or privately owned. With traditional IRF, the awards are capped at $600,000, but with the ARPA funds, um, projects that fall into those categories could see awards of up to $5 million, depending on the project. One-to-one -one match is required, but for those that are funded through ARPA, that one-to-one -one match is only required for projects that receive awards of over $1 million. Properties must be vacant and derelict, and the future use must be at least 30% commercial. So these uh, funds can be used for mixed use projects that have um, a housing component to them, but the housing component can uh, be no more than 70% of that project. Funding priorities for IRF uh, needs to have a relationship to your local or regional economic development strategy, a high degree of blight and deterioration, needs to be a project that is really ready to go, that has that um, the funding in hand as much as possible, that has the phase one done, that knows what needs to happen for remediation, that has an end user identified and so on. A project with a clear end use, and again, that should be a market-driven purpose. End use has a clear and significant community impact 
and there is a high economic distress in the project locality. So if you're looking at this list and you're thinking, oh, we don't have all of these things, well, that's why we they all kind of balance against each other. So Annie Arnest, who is on the back end right now, is happy to answer your questions and um, staff is happy to set up meetings to help you think through what projects may be um, available in your communities. So these are some of the program dates that we have coming up for the next fiscal year. And you know, stay tuned to our websites, to the Community Revitalization Office newsletter, virginiamainstreet.com blog, and you will see these dates as they roll out. Now, if you notice, I said that there were 38 funded IRF projects in, I think it was 33 communities across the state. And Bedford is going to be our IRF program example today because they have um, very successfully completed an IRF project in the past that has led to a second IRF grant in their locality. So we are very excited to have Mary Zirkel with us today from the town of Bedford. And Mary has been in the field of planning in public and private sectors for over 25 years, as well as in local government management. And uh, Mary, I didn't know that you had been the town manager of Buchanan. And she's been focused on economic development since 2014 and is has been with the town of Bedford since 2018. So we are thrilled to have Mary with us today to talk about what the Industrial Revitalization Fund has meant to Bedford. Good morning, everyone. So thank you for having me here, Rebecca. This is a great opportunity to shout out about what Bedford has, uh, has been up to in the past few years. So um, I just wanna jump into this. Uh, I think Rebecca said I had like 30 minutes, but I'm gonna try and sum it up down to five. So I think we can cover it then. But in the town of Bedford and in full disclosure, this project is in the town of Bedford, but it was a Bedford County Economic Development Authority project of which the town was a party to. Our uh, EDA was on hiatus after we um, reverted from a city to a town. And so we now have reconstituted our Economic Development Authority and have since, as Rebecca mentioned, got our own IRF grant for another development um, in this vicinity as well too. But we'll talk about the one that was the Woolen Mills. So this was the 2015 uh, view of what we were looking at in our community in the Grove Street area. The Woolen Mill was a very large complex of uh, textile industry. The building here was the 1930s and it housed the, the back house operations of what was the Woolen Mill. So this 16,000 square foot building um, has been the priority of this particular developer out of the 140,000 square feet in the area immediately uh, here. So um, they'd actually, the developer had done Bedford Loss, which was right around the corner from this back in 2014. So this is a high priority uh, for improvement in our uh, industrial district here. So this is what it looked like on the outside. And in the next slide, you'll see what the interior looked like. Um, basic open warehouse doesn't really look too inspiring as I really like those light fixtures. Those are really popular these days. Mm -hmm. So this is what it looked like on the inside. And I want to just cover a little bit of nuts and bolts because um, as Rebecca mentioned, it does need to be a targeted project. So we were fortunate to have a developer who was ready to do something with this particular building to help in the whole community. So the next slide talks about the mechanics of how that this can work here from um, vacant to vibrant. Uh, what the developer and the County Economic Development Authority envisioned was a brewing facility and restaurant that was going to be basically the first of its kind in the area around Bedford and in Bedford in our region. To, to tell you how it worked uh, behind the scenes was the developer sold the building to the County Economic Development Authority for a dollar. So that's what made it interesting is that the county became a landlord, the owner of the property, and they were able to leverage the grant for the IRF. So um, the, the county became the administrator of the grant and through a performance agreement with the county EDA, the town of Bedford and the developer, they were able to uh, make that happen in addition to other funds. So I want to also just call in, call out the Virginia Community Capital was a partner in this as well. So super important to layer these things together um, in, in these packages. So the reimbursement of the IRF went through the county to the developer, for those who aren't familiar with the mechanics of this. Um, and then the developer now pays rent to the EDA as the owner. So that's how this is working uh, on the number side. And then some more numbers on the next slide, talking about the um, 
the actual budget that was submitted for this, um, 600,000 for the IRF, and it was leveraged with a lot of the work that was gonna have to be done anyway with the demolition and construction. Um, it also had to do with some asbestos. I'm looking here at my, um, my other capital stack here was talking about all the things that had to be done besides the demolition that you see there. So obviously it was acquired for a dollar, but that really wasn't what it cost the developer was a lot more than that. But then the construction costs were already gonna be done by the developer anyway. Um, so that's that's the big thing. What I also want to want you to notice here is there's a line item for branding of thirty two thousand that the developer was um, going to be putting in towards the project. So we'll see what happens with that thirty two thousand going forward. So after all of that numbers go together, then we have in the next slide what we have today. And this was actually in twenty nineteen. We had some aerial footage flown of this. This has become one of our hot spots in the town. Um, Beals has really literally made a name for itself in the community. You can see it's still sitting in that same warehouse area, but what it is now is a destination. So one of the things I love is when my uh, my colleagues around the area say, hey, I was at Beals over the weekend. I'm like, oh man, that was huge. When you tell me you've come to Bedford for something that, that we are known for here in Beals and Bedford. And Beals, we have a, a legend of the treasurer of Beals, Beals treasure. So that's where the brand was developed around that. So this is what we're looking at today. Uh, they continue to grow. They have some, um, uh, the, the big thing though about the brewing facility was this, they're, they're putting their brewing out there. It's not just people coming to Bedford, it's getting out there. So some of the statistics and outcomes of this project, well, when they opened in June, 2017, we've seen an average annual meals tax of 45,000 annual. So that's, that's every year in the, about the four and a half years it's been open. And the, the great part about that is the town council in 2016 put a half cent meals tax on the meals tax. So that half cent goes to fund the incentives that our economic development authority is able to put back into the community based on the success of this restaurant and others. Um, and so they ballparked about eight full-time employees and we're now at about 30, my last check-in with them. So um, and they're doing great things over there. And a lot of people have worked at Beals and then they move on to go to other restaurants too. So it's kind of a, a starter for, um, for our community as well. And then the increase in the property value is huge from 61,000 to over 1.3 million. So that definitely will help with the tax rolls too. So very important to know that it's, it's not about the numbers of the, the, that, but um, that amount of improved property value is huge for the community. So. In the next slide, you can see that we have um, really taken advantage, I say we, it's, it's Beals has taken advantage of their own brand. That's really important to see what Beals has become for our community as a place to be. So that one lighter photograph of everybody getting together, that was one of our business appreciation events through our economic development authorities of the town and county. So just as a place to be. And then the darker picture, I just wanna point out, I'm not sure how many of you may have heard, we had a fire at our uh, middle school facility which was also going to be rehabilitated by this particular developer. And so we were able to come together as a community and hear from the developer what the plans were to help with that other project. And then the Beals brand, I mentioned, I love to see Beals out in the wild. I love to see Beals on tap somewhere. And then the branding that they've done, I don't know if you can read the, um, the, the beer can there, I don't wanna say it out loud. And um, it was just one of those things that has kind of organically happened as people have reacted to the brand and they, they react well too, and that's given them national recognition for how they um, how they are in our in our community and across the country. And then we just love our Beals brand. It's just just huge. We see we see it everywhere, and that that to me is is critical to what we're doing. Um, and then so in the next slide, we're talking about future projects. It's not just about this one; it's about the next one too. So right around the corner, on the other side of the railroad tracks, we have um, what's going to be the 620 railroad project. This was one of our uh, Rubitex facilities, uh, which has been vacant for ages. No one wanted to touch it because of all the issues. And it's really not that bad once the, once the developer was able to, to believe that something good can happen based on what's happening around it. So this is gonna be 53 market rate apartments in one, two, and three bedroom configurations. And in the bottom, we're gonna have some commercial spaces too. One of them is gonna be a franchise. So this is again, literally right down the street within view of Beals and Bedford Lofts. And so again, it's about what happens next with our projects as we grow into these. So um, the last slide just has my contact information on here and just to shout out again, how much we love Beals and what it's meant for Bedford and just putting us on a map. And so 
$600,000 can go a really long way if you have someone who knows what they're going to do and a community that's willing to help them do it, because that's what we can do as local government is leverage uh, at least that to help move things off the dime. So thank you all. Thank you so much, so much, Mary. That really is one of my favorite economic development and industrial revitalization fund stories. Um, and I will tell you that um, here in the Roe household, we are doing our part to promote the Beals brand and to promote Bedford. Uh, my husband definitely has a t-shirt and it is not uncommon for there to be a brick of Beals beer in our refrigerator. And that is another uh, great point with this particular brand and other potential IRF projects that, you know, as Mary referred to, they are not only brewing the beer there, but they now have distribution. You can now find this beer um, probably at your local store or a local restaurant and taking on that kind of production and not just having a brew pub has meant additional jobs in the town of Bedford. So absolutely, we see that project paying um, dividends for that locality. And we are really excited to see what happens with the hotel project in the coming years. So thank you so much, Mary, for being a part of the program today.